Check it out now, y'all. Nano Hub U online instruction. Hi, we're back again uh, to finish up uh, week two of this uh, part one of this course called Fundamentals of Atomic Force Microscopy. And in this particular lecture, we're going to focus on combining the contact mechanics that we discussed in the previous lecture with the intermolecular interactions that we discussed at the beginning of week two and start to put these, uh, these two separate uh, items together to form some rational basis for understanding uh, what happens when a tip comes into contact with a, with a substrate. Uh, the basic question is how we're going to model uh, this interaction of the tip with the substrate. Uh, and, and this model uh, must include two important features, right? First, and fe first important feature must, must be how the tip interacts with the substrate when the tip is separated from a, by a distance d from the substrate. And then the uh, second important feature that we have to include is what happens when the tip is brought to within a distance A0 of the substrate. So A0 is a typical atomic dimension, something on the order of 0.3 nanometers. Uh, when the tip is basically in contact with the substrate, we have to refer to contact mechanics uh, to, to provide us with some, with some guidance about uh, what the type of interactions are, are going to result. Uh, in this lecture um, and in future lectures, I'm going to start to use the parameter small d to describe the separation between the tip and the substrate. I'm going to use this parameter capital D to describe the deformation that occurs when the tip comes into contact with the substrate. What we're basically interested in doing is we're trying to model the interaction forces as a function of, of separation D, uh, small d, or as a function of the uh, deformation capital D. We want to know what the what forces result uh, when, when these uh, parameters take on specific values. So to begin with, let's talk about perhaps the, the simplest example we can think of, right? Simplest example would be a tip approaching the substrate. We would pretend that there are no interaction forces between the tip and the substrate. So the interaction force as a function of D is essentially zero. When the tip comes into contact with the substrate at some, some point A0 on this, this plot, then the indentation force rises very rapidly upwards uh, because the, uh, both the tip and the sample are infinitely hard. So the, the, uh, the interaction force versus tip sample distance for this very simple model is, would then be uh, a, a plot so, similar to the one that I've sketched in this, in this, uh, in this diagram. Uh, that's not very realistic because most samples and most substrates are not infinitely hard. So as we start to relax the constraint on uh, the hardness of the materials, as we start to attribute a specific Young's modulus to the tip, and a different Young's modulus to the substrate, what we're going to do is we're going to rely on these contact models uh, that we discussed in a previous lecture to allow us to predict the deformation as a function of the uh, force applied to the tip as it, as it pushes into the substrate. So the next logical example that we might uh, consider is the Hertz contact. Uh, so this particular example, uh, what I show is I show the interaction force between the tip and the substrate is zero because that there's no surface forces uh, at all in the Hertz model. So as the tip approaches the substrate, the interaction force is zero. Until we reach this parameter A0, at that point, then the Hertz contact model sets in, and the, uh, the prediction of the Hertz contact model is written in this equation at the top of the slide. Again, we have to define this effective elastic modulus, E star, and uh, that requires us to know roughly what this, what this modulus of the substrate and sample uh, might be. It also requires us to know roughly what the uh, 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 Poisson's ratio for the tip and the sample might be. So I ran through a, a, a simple graph just to show you what's going to happen. 
in this particular case, I picked the mod Young's modulus of the tip to be 100 gigapascal. The Young's modulus of the sample was 400 gigapascal. So the, 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 the modulus, the, the, the hardness of the sample here is pretty, pretty hard. 400 gigapascal is a big number. Uh, the uh, Poisson's ratio is both set for both the tip and the sample are set to one third. It's a typical value. Uh, I pretend that tip, the tip radius is about five nanometers. And what I, what I get is that once the tip comes into contact with the substrate at the position A0, then the deformation that results uh, for, a, uh, for a particular applied force F is, is, is as shown in this particular graph. So what you can see is the deformation parameter is, 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 uh, is measured from the, uh, the position A0. That's indicated by this vertical dashed line. Very often the deformation is given a negative value to indicate that the tip is indenting into the substrate. But basically what's happening is, uh, for, for applied forces, uh, between roughly zero and 25 nanonewtons, uh, the interact, the indent, the deformation or the indentation of the tip into the substrate for these particular set of parameters, uh, follows the red curve. And, uh, we typically have on the order of 0 0.3, 0 0.4 nanometer indentation, uh, when the, uh, 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 applied force is about 25 nanonewtons. So this would be the, 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 uh, result for the Hertz contact model, uh, the, Shortcoming of this model is uh, not so much the deformation, but the lack of uh, interaction forces when the tip is separated from the substrate. And so if we want to recover that uh, interaction between the tip and the substrate, uh, we have to explicitly put it into the model. And, and uh, that, that is uh, uh, discussed in this particular uh, view graph. So here, what we're trying to show is we're trying to show a tip with radius R separated from a substrate by a distance D. Uh, typical atomic uh, parameter here is given by this, this red uh, quantity A sub zero. That's the typical inner atomic distance. And the uh, force in this case, the contact force in this case, is going to be modeled by the DMT model for contact mechanics. The relevant equations are given in, in, the, uh, uh, in the middle of the, of the view graph. Uh, again, the parameter D is modeling the separation between the tip and the substrate. And um, what happens, of course, is as we let the tip approach the substrate, uh, D now becomes a function of time. There's an interaction force that occurs between the tip and the substrate as the tip slowly approaches the substrate. And this model, these equations, uh, uh, capture the, the basic physics of that interaction. Um, this, this particular slide gives just a plot of, of the interaction force uh, versus uh, separation. Uh, in this particular case, I chose a reasonably soft sample, about 10 gigapascals. Uh, the tip subs, the tip Young's modulus is on the order of 100 gigapascals. And what you can see from this plot is that as the tip starts to approach this parameter A0, uh, the, uh, interaction force actually becomes negative. That indicates that the tip is being pulled toward the substrate. The way the tip is pulled towards the substrate, that varies as 1 over d squared, and that's a result of integrating the 1 over z to the sixth interaction potential energy over the geometry of the tip and substrate using the, the Hamacher constants appropriate for, for this particular uh, model. In this case, I used a Hamacher constant of about 3 times 10 to the minus 19 joules, was a, which is a typical value. So this negative going region uh, indicates an attractive force between the tip and the substrate. And of course, that attractive force is a one over D squared force. When the tip comes into contact with the substrate at position A0, then the DMT model for contact mechanics takes over. We now start to get a deformation 
uh, the tip starts to penetrate into the substrate and, and the amount of penetration is, is plotted is a, is, a, is a value to the left of this dashed vertical red line. Right? So for any uh, applied force, uh, we, we can then predict from this chart the, uh, the, the, the deformation that results. So the deformations are on the order of uh, uh, 0 to 0.8 nanometers for the parameters that I've chosen here. Uh, in the case of the JKR contact uh, situation, it's a little bit more complicated because now the, uh, uh, the predictions of JKR are very hysteretic because of these interaction forces between the tip and the substrate in the, in the, in the, uh, over the area of contact, right? You can form adhesive bonds between atoms and molecules in the tip and atoms and molecules in the substrate. These adhesive bonds then have to be broken as the tip is pulled away from the substrate. And what basically happens is you've, you've got a, a very hysteretic curve. So qualitatively, if you, uh, if you plot the, the tip sample separation on, along the x-axis, you apply the, uh, the resulting tip sample force along the y-axis, right? You can follow along what's going to happen uh, by just watching the, the, the black dot, right? So in this particular case, we have no uh, surface forces acting between the tip and the sample. So as the tip approaches the sample, the black dot will just execute a, a horizontal line uh, at, the, at the point of contact, which in this particular slide, the point of contact is represented as zero, D equal to zero. Uh, there'll be a jump of the tip into contact with the substrate. Uh, deformation will occur as we load the tip against the substrate. And then as we pull the tip away from the substrate, you're gonna see there's a hysteretic behavior this hysteretic behavior is due to this adhesion that occurs in the JKR model. Now, the amount of adhesion, of course, is going to be determined by this work of adhesion, this, this parameter W132 in the JKR model. And so if you want to model experimental data with this theoretical uh, 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 model, you've got to have some, uh, some idea of what this, this work of adhesion W uh, one, two, three, or WJKR in this slide, what that actually is. So if I, if I animate this thing, you'll see, you'll see the hysteretic behavior. So here we're approaching, we jump, we load, as we pull off, uh, you can see that the, 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 the interaction force between the tip and the substrate is not the same pull off as there is, uh, during approach. So, uh, all of these models can be implemented. You can use MATLAB or even Excel spreadsheets to, to do calculations uh, uh, based on these models. But one of the, one of the advantages of, of uh, taking this course is that you're going to learn how to use this uh, VEDA uh, uh, simulation package that's, a, that's available for free on the uh, NanoHub website. Um, some, for some reason, I'm jumping ahead here. Uh, so the model that you, that you can choose to fit experimental data is, is already been mapped out and, and, uh, coded into the VEDA software. So when we start to, um, uh, uh, when we start to describe the, the VEDA software, you'll see that you'll be able to actually go in, you'll be able to model the tip sample interaction by specifying relevant parameters. You'll also be able to choose a wide variety of different uh, models to, to, to uh, try to mimic experimental data. And, and I just give a listing here of the different models that the that, that VEDA currently contains. Uh, another, another feature of VEDA is that you don't actually have to have the mathematics of each model uh, in your head when you're, when you're trying to select a model to fit experimental data. Uh, VEDA gives you these very uh, iconic plots that identify the important parameters uh, in the model in a very graphic way. So by just looking at the graphs, it, it helps you decide which model might be most appropriate to fit your experimental data. So this is again a, a, a useful feature and it, 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 it's intended to help those of you that may not be uh, 
uh, experts in all these different areas. Uh, it doesn't require you to be an expert in all these different areas. You can just, by visually looking at the plots, uh, you can make decisions about which model is best best for your, your particular case. So <clears throat> I think that ends uh, week two of these lectures. Um, just wanted to say that week three um, is, uh, we're gonna move more into uh, uh, the simulation mode, we're going to start to talk a little bit about uh, VEDA and give you a brief introduction to how, how to access it. And also we're going to talk in some detail about the uh, AFM as an instrument. We're going to start to characterize and describe to you the various parts of an atomic force microscope and try to give you some feeling about how those, uh, those uh, different parts have been designed and constructed and actually how they work. So uh, come back for week three. Uh, we'll actually be focusing now much more on atomic force microscopy, much less on the fundamentals required to understand an, uh, the data from an atomic force microscope. And I, I, I hope you find that discussion to be very interesting and worthwhile. So we'll see you next week.